So, what a, what a, oh, the audience is supposed to act drunk, sorry. So, when we think about learning, does anyone know exactly how learning works? Oh good, this is an honest crowd. Until someone can figure out how that subneuronal lightning storm's experience accounts rather for our experience of being alive and sharing this moment, we don't have license to talk about this learning model, that learning model, and the other learning model. Every system that gets developed fails, and here's why. As a kid, I walked into school and thought, learning rocks, school sucks, my daughter's the same way. We like to have fun, we like to be messy, we like to be chaotic. My thought process doesn't go step by step. Piaget, Maslow, Vygotsky, they don't account for how I think. And this is why the value proposition of school is impossible to make to a mass audience. We have so many people running away from a comprehensive life-saving service that we have to ask ourselves, if that's for free, what can we add value to in a point that people would actually invest themselves? What does it mean to be a globally educated citizen in this point in history? That means acquiring information, analyzing information, evaluating information, curating information, and acting on information. And those are literacies, as we all know, that school doesn't really address. So, in a perfect world, I'd have more than five minutes, and we talk about mental fitness, physical fitness, spiritual fitness, civic fitness, and technological fitness, the stuff that makes us successful members of this culture. But right now, school is isolated from that. So, we have to go back to basics. Now, I know people in here are loving badges and MOOCs and all sorts of great stuff, and the tools rock, but the scalpel in the hand of a surgeon can save your life. Scalpel in the hand of a gangster can take it. MOOCs, all that other stuff, it's a tool, and it's a great tool to have in the buffet, but you can do all of this with freeware. And the matter is setting the learner free. This is a course blog that I run, and I'm gonna show you everything through artifacts. This isn't a hypothetical or a research project. This is proof of concept. I've been doing this with learners for years. This is all free, but the learners are able to publicly curate their own information. And what that means is, they're now not looking out over the hedgerow at the culture they're supposed to join. They're in it, and they're gathering personal learning networks. They're experiencing content experts telling them when their jobs are great and when they need work. And they're able to express the collaborative skills that we know are so important in the workplace. This is an example of a mind map that we curated in 24 hours. It was a flash mob of intellectual behavior. So the article with William Gibson you see on the left would have taken any one of us a week or two to research properly. They did it in 24 hours. We have content experts available throughout our culture. This is Howard Rheingold on screen with one of my students. We have this wonderful intergenerational wisdom sharing that we so undervalue in our culture, and we get to use these tools to expand it everywhere. Digital natives don't waste my time. I grew up in California. It doesn't mean I know a thing about it. What we have here is a community that knows, yes, Facebook, yes, the internet, yes, my habits have been reinforced over hours of use, but there's no spectator in this medium. They're all participants. That same image showed up in a TED Talk in Africa. And every single time my students see their own blogs in the screen in the room, they're taken aback. Wait, I do have an audience out there who cares about what I say and cares about me being a person of value. Gaming is another example. We've gamed, and that's fine, but that's not the end. That's a means. That's a tool in the toolbox, an item on the buffet for them to sample. It does get them going. It does join the disciplines. Forget about the singularity, ladies and gentlemen. We're heading towards the interdisciplinary. Show me a teacup, I'll show you botany, ceramics, and the history of colonialism. In the gaming environment, that's important because the students realize that no one authority figure can evaluate all of them. They have to evaluate each other. And without the evidence of badges or somebody else giving them a tool to use, they built the model themselves. This is a peer-to-peer -peer evaluation tool that students built on their own because they saw a need and they met it. That's what we call innovation. And when we talk about lifelong learning and where the next great ideas are going to come from, they're not going to come from intellectual veal that get instructed and told what to do for 12 years and then when they get out of the cult, get held accountable for things that they don't know. This is an example of a student who saw the game that I presented and said, fine, I can do better. This is an example of a student who took my entire course curriculum and remixed it, remixed it rather into a mind map that everyone could use for easy reference. Student blogs on the right, literature analysis on the left, all the curriculum units in the middle. That was better than anything I could have put together. And then they extend beyond. Then they go beyond the curriculum to see themselves with the mind map in the middle, NGO and microfinance in Africa on the left, working with students in Mexico to give them opportunities on the right, looking at computer fixes, software fixes, and teaching each other how to be digital citizens in a private, secure way. That leads to entrepreneurship. Persons who are willing to launch a new venture or enterprise and take full responsibility. 
that combination of fun and risk and innovation adds value to every community and marketplace, and I hope that you join us in open source learning. Thank you.